watched a video from me before, you know that cards that take 15 to 20 minutes are generally my specialty. Anything that takes longer than that, I tend to avoid them. But there are three techniques that are too stunning to avoid. I want to know in the comments below what you think about them. Do you tend to avoid these ones too? Or are there other techniques that you feel that take too long? Anything that takes longer than two minutes to dry, I tend to avoid. In the world of instant gratification, I like to get my project from start to finish done. Now, if I have to go ahead and add a paste to something and then wait an hour or two until it dries, I tend to get a little unmotivated. However, I've been learning that when this technique does come to mind and I feel like applying paste, I try to apply them to my panels right when I know I'm going to have to start crafting soon because I have something else to do. That way I'm not starting something else new while I'm waiting for them to dry and I get into that 10 projects on the go chaos situation. Now there are two pastes that I find myself willing to wait for and one of them is transfer gel. Transfer gel takes around one to two hours to dry, but when you cover the paste with foil and you run it through a laminator, you get such stunning results. With the transfer gel duos, you don't even need a laminator for it. You can take a walk on the wild side and not even apply heat. In my experience, I get uneven results with this. Sometimes I get areas where the foil doesn't stick. However, I do recommend taking your panel and the foil and running it through your die cutting machine. That pressure from the die cutting machine seems to give me really good results every time. Now the second paste I'm willing to wait for is embossing paste. A couple reasons why. One of them is I can add any sort of ink refill to it and color it any color that I want. That way I only have to keep one paste on hand instead of having all the different colors that are available. The other reason is when I'm creating a very clean and simple card that has a lot of white space, sometimes it looks a little too bare. And so by taking a stencil and just adding a couple of places of texture just with some white paste on top can make all of the difference. And I can also get away with a lot of the times finishing my card while the paste is still wet. I tend to not apply embossing paste over the entire panel, so I try to stick my sentiment in an area where it's not covered in paste, and that way I can technically finish the card and just leave it out to dry. And my second technique is kind of a double technique here. I'm gonna show you two because they have a lot to do with each other. One of them is the Joseph's Coat Technique. Now you know that I love ink blending and I love heat embossing, but somehow combining the two plus adding a few extra steps, of course, seems to be tedious to me. I love the results though, because adding black to any sort of colorful panel is going to make colors just pop and shine and they look so stunning. Now for Joseph's coat, you simply ink blend a colorful background. The cool thing about this technique is that you can worry less about harsh lines and perfect blends. Now you have to make sure it's dry or hit it with a heat tool. The panel needs to be completely dry at this point. Next, you're going to take your stamp and stamp it using sticky embossing ink. Cover it with clear embossing powder and heat the powder up. Now whatever you have behind that stamped image is going to be protected. So that pattern that you've stamped as well as the color behind it. You know this as a heat resist or embossing resist technique. That's nothing new. Lastly, you're going to take your black ink and you're going to rub it into the background. You can keep it nice and light or really saturate your paper. The black is going to make those colors pop. Now I mentioned a second technique and that's the iron off technique. Now at this point, your card is completely finished if you're just doing the Joseph's coat technique. There's no reason to follow up with this technique at all, but this technique is really versatile and it's an oldie but a goodie. And this can be applied to any panel or card that you've applied heat embossing to. Now all you're gonna do is grab your iron. I mean, it's gotta provide some use for something, right? I mean, I never iron clothes. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna lay down a towel on my ironing board. I'm going to grab a piece of normal printer copy paper and I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna put my card in between that copy paper and I'm going to use my iron and iron over top. I'm not gonna have it on a super high setting or anything, just play around with it. What you'll notice when you open up the towel is your copy paper should look almost like it's wet, almost like it's got a wax on it or an oily film to it. As long as that oily film seems to match up approximately with what you've embossed, then you'll all be done. 
Now what this does is it actually takes off the embossing powder in a way. It makes it matte. And so what that does is it's remelted the powder, taken it off, and now that shine is gone and it almost looks like a piece of pattern paper. This is a favorite technique of mine because I always get asked after that, did you buy that printed pattern paper or how did you make that? It's a really, really cool thing. Layering stamps and dies. Layering dies really bring cards to life by adding depth and detail, and layering stamps bring a realistic look to floral stamps and other objects. However, both require multiple monotonous steps of various ink shades and stamping over and over again, or shades of cardstock if you're die cutting, and again, die cutting each layer over and over and over again. Layering dies take it even a step further because you have to glue them together at the end. At least with a layering stamp, you're kind of one and done. Unless, of course, you mask it off and you do it all over again. But the results are so worth it in the end. The cards are gorgeous, and not to mention, I've managed to use a few paper scraps, which is always nice to reduce that pile of madness. Now, if you have trouble with your layering stamps at all, I want you to meet me over here in this video. Don't put those stamps to waste because I have a bunch of layering hacks that are gonna help you figure out how to get those stamps layered and some best practices, tips, and tricks you might not have tried with your layering stamps, especially if you've been frustrated with them in the past. So meet me over there and I'll see you next week for another video. Bye for now.